give you a quick update as to how I'm doing with the uh, DIY synthesizer project that I've been working on. Uh, I guess less of a DIY synth project and more of a an actual product that I want to to try and develop. Um, I've been basically working on um, working on building it on breadboards so far. Um, so if you're not familiar with this project, just really quickly, because um, I know some people have tuned in a lot already. Um, I'm just going to uh, share this into some the right groups. Um, the idea of the synth is to create a, a completely analog um, synthesizer with uh, using the uh, S uh, the CEM thirty three forty and some related chips, um, which are known for eighties uh, synthesizers. Um, the uh, so I'm just going to say here added some filter envelopes. Um, let's post this here to synth DIY. All right, post that and that's away. Okay, back to focusing here. Um, so the, the the goal here is to create a, um, uh, a completely discrete analog signal path synthesizer with uh, a couple of different voices that um, come together to to make a really meaty bass sort of sound. Um, the idea for this is that it should sound great as soon as you plug it in um, without having to do bunch of other processing and stuff. So that's the mission. Um, first thing I wanted to do was just to give you an update on, on the sort of the progress that's been made to date. So if we switch over to the to the workbench here, a um, bunch of things I've done uh, just over the last day or two. First is, um, just make sure you can see what I'm poking at here. Uh, so I've changed the camera angle around a little bit. Um, this is the envelope generator that already existed. It's based on the uh, AS3310 uh, ADSR emulator, uh, envelope generator, emulator, um, which creates the envelope. And then I added a second one of those because this one was controlling the amplifier uh, envelope, the final note sort of volume. But this one now is wired into the filter cutoff of, um, I think just the cutoff. I don't think I've wired it into resonance yet. Um, but that will be an interesting experiment too. Um, and that's added a whole lot of character to the sound. And I've also rebuilt the filter on the, the, um, sort of second voice on this, turn the multimeter off, um, so that that adds uh, you know, a lot more character and depth into the sound. So just uh, let's take you through how it sounded last time we listened. So. so sounding okay, but now what we've, we've also added in the, the sub oscillator, so that brings in, uh, sorry, no, so the sub, that's with the, the, the primary voice and the sub oscillator. Um, but now I've added in the uh, second voice. And the idea here is that you can just subtly you can just subtly detune that um, second voice so that you get sort of a wider stereo effect, which we can just uh, try really quickly here. So if I just keep playing some notes and, and fiddle with the fine tuning here. just adds a bit more characters like if we turn that second voice off and back on just a bit more depth and then so you'll be able to control the, the tuning of that so that you can um, adjust that to taste um, either to be you know very um, tightly tuned with the other oscillator so that there isn't much of a, a detune sort of effect and then you, you can go even wider to even get a chorus sort of effect which you can kind of hear happening there. I'll just try and tune in this a little bit more. You can probably can hear there that there's quite a beat happening. Look at that sort of wah, wah, wah. Um, but the really cool thing that I think adds a ton of character into this sound is 
you can now control how much this um, second envelope is affecting the filter cutoff on the sound. So I'm just going to play uh, a couple of notes here, um, and I'm trying to do two things at once, which I'm particularly bad at, but um, just take a listen to how this sounds. And yes, if you can see on the video, I have uh, broken my watch. Get a new one today. Don't put your watch on over the tiled floor. Anyway, let's listen to this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just dialing up the amount of um, effect that it, the filter envelope has on the cutoff. That adds a ton of character to this. So if you turn the filter effect right up, um, so this is the envelope is having the most effect on modulating the filter cutoff. And you can also adjust the sort of the offset point, I guess, so how so where the filter starts from. Of a loose connection on this plug. So that's like having a very sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pushing the filter up a little bit from an almost closed position to just adjusting an almost wide open filter. there. Um, the envelope is also affecting the, the sub bass oscillator so um, you can filter you can, you can change around that same filter offset to having more of an effect on the growl underneath. So a really really gritty sort of bass sound. Because we're now modulating the filter cutoff, resonance really comes into its own here. So it's just right. check this out. Oh well, interestingly, that resonance was right up. So <laughs> so this is with the resonance down. makes a bit more sense. That's the more sort of bassy sort of synth sound that I was looking for, um, which even if I'm just adjusting the, the levels on the different voices here and the, the cut point of the filter. See, that sounds really nice with those two voices sort of creating that stereo width, um, but then you turn up the resonance. You can almost get up in the self-oscillation territory. really nice and soft. And a really 
really growl in the air. And you can also um, just uh, one other neat thing here. You can change the mix of the um, the waveform that's coming through. So at the moment, that's kind of a, a bit of a square wave with a little bit of a sawtooth, but we can change that right around and say dial up the uh, the main note voices into just a sawtooth. Which, if we turn the filter up, you'll hear more of the character. the filter cutoff modulation by the envelope. Turn the sub bass down. And of course the the filter envelope attack uh, the filter envelope envelope sorry the filter cutoff envelope generator has um, attack and release controls as well, so it's very hard to hit, and then we can slow up. Change the release. Very sort of resonant, sort of resonant top part of the bass sound, then bring the sub bass back in to really give it depth. things you can do with this um, but those those are sort of the basic controls and what I'm thinking of doing is making the, the filter um, the, the amount of envelope that gets fed into the filter to be kind of akin to um, a velocity control so when you uh, when you're playing this lightly on the keys you'll get sort of just that that flat kind of sound but then as you um, play the keys harder begin to have more of that filter impact, so a hard hit versus a soft hit. Which uh, makes more impact if we turn that, we turn that release back down. And the attack down. So it's having that very sort of initial hard hit on the filter. So soft hit would be like that, and then progressively, as the velocity gets harder, you get that really wax of the sound more. Um, right at the start of the note. Um, the other th last thing I did add is I did hook up a reverb via a. Um, a reverb brick that's usually designed for guitar pedals, but I thought it might work, which you can kind of hear. Um, it doesn't sound great at all. So that's coming out, and a uh, using a uh, reverb via a FV1 uh, chip from Spin Semiconductors, a, a little DSP um, unit is going to go in this afternoon. Um, and then one other change that I'm going to do today, which um, I'll live stream as well, is this bit on the board here that's currently empty. 
um, is going to get uh, a third envelope because I want to be able to control the filter cutoff envelope that's being applied to the, the, the main two voices, the note voices. Um, I want that to be different to the envelope that's applied to the sub bass because that way you could have that really tight doing, doing sort of um, hard hit on the um, main voices, which will then um, create a nice um, you know, sound with a lot of harmonic content initially in the note to feed into the into the reverb effect to create a long tail. Um, but then the, the sub bass note, you kind of want that to, to rumble on much longer. Um, so we'll have a separate separate envelope for that. And maybe it affects the amp um, envelope for that voice, or maybe it affects the filter cutoff. I'm not sure I need to experiment with that to see what gives me the, the desired result. But, uh, but yeah, that's where we're at right now. So we've got, um, it's a three voice, uh, two voices at the actual note that's being played, which can be detuned, a sub oscillator, um, all of which get mixed together, um, and they have their own separate filter stages. And um, we now have uh, one, we have two envelope generators, one controlling the overall, uh, the amplifier uh, envelope, and the other one controlling the, uh, the filter cutoff that's wired into the, it's currently wired into actually all three voices filter stages, um, but I'm going to change that so that it's just into the, one envelope is into the primary two voices, and one is into the, uh, the sub oscillator. Um, and then, then I think we're at the stage where this is close enough, depending on if that reverb effect does what I wanted, then I think I'm close enough to what I, I had envisaged for the first um, version of this. Um, and I've been making, making schematics of this as I go, which you can see on the screen here is the main sort of voice of the uh, 3340 and the uh, 3310 and the V2164 VCAs here. Um, be making these as I go, uh, and then, but I realized that originally I had sort of a, a modular, not sort of a modular synth, but modular uh, in terms of how it was designed approach to creating separate voice modules that I'd plug into a main board. But I think I've realized now that you know, things like controlling the mix of, um, you know, sawtooth versus square wave, um, th those, those need to be one set of controls that affects multiple, the, the, the two note voices basically. Um, and so it just doesn't really make sense to have them um, be too separate. There's, there's a lot of controls that actually need to con control similar things. And I'm also wondering, um, also wondering whether I can get get away with um, having one filter stage for the primary two voices as opposed to two independent filters. Um, and also, uh, yeah, just trying to reduce the component count. At the moment, it's, it consists of... Um, take a look at the board here it's, it's pretty busy in terms of the the components which will make it expensive to to, to build because um, there is uh two sem 3340s being used the two primary voices a sub oscillator is cheap because that's that's a using a 4013 um, frequency divider um but then there's still each voice so all three of them each each of those uses a separate uh, v2164d which is the quad vca to, to mix the waveforms together and to do the amp in, um, envelope uh, apply the amp envelope to it um, each of the three voices has its own sem3320 or as3320 which is the self-contained um, vcf voltage controlled filter um, and then there's another um, AS2164 quad VCA that I use to then bring those three voices together plus the reverb. Um, and in fact, I'll need to use, I think, probably another one again because we'll need to do, we'll need to mix together the three voices um, to produce a, a dry signal as well as a, um, a signal that we can feed into the, the DSP for the digital effects. And then the, the audio path back from that uh, is going to want to bring. Uh, is going to need to be mixed in um, selectively to have sort of a dry wet signal there too. Um, and, and I'm also toying with the idea of making that a, a, an effect slip that you can plug other effects into um, just in case you're allergic to the, the notion of there being a digital effects unit in, a, in an otherwise analog synth. Um, but that's it for now. It's uh, it's really coming along. The, then there's a bit more work to be done here in the, um, so this is a STM32, uh, 411, I think it is, discovery board. So basically a development board for the STM32 series of microcontrollers. And I use that as my, um, basically the MIDI feeds into there. Off this board here, which has the, the opto, um, opto isolator, opto coupler, um, to bring the, the, the MIDI serial signal into here. We process the MIDI notes and then use 
um, a couple of digital or analog um, converters to basically create the control voltages that we want to then apply to the, the oscillators con to control their pitch. Um, and that we'll, we'll also use a combination of either digital potentiometers or, or um, digital analog converters to generate the voltages to control the filter envelopes, um, parameters, and the, uh, the amount of mix of, of how we're uh, mixing that in. Um, that's it for now. I'm going to take a quick break and we'll live stream later when I um, start building up that uh, third envelope and also adding in the uh, the DSP for the effects because that, that should be the final two pieces to the sound that I wanted to create here. Thanks everyone.